Okay, welcome back to the second session of the conference where we're talking about Greek food and gastronomy. And I've got my good friends and colleagues, Catherine Cheng and Kathy Su, who will be chairing uh, this session. Kathy, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you, Pro uh, Professor Bohalas. Uh, welcome to our second session for the Greek Gastronomy and Diet Festival. So myself, I'm Dr. Catherine Chung. I am the uh, Associate Professor and Associate Dean of the School of Hotel and Tourism Management, the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. With me, I have Professor Kathy Shi here. Maybe <coughs> Professor Dean, perhaps. Yeah. So Professor Shi is with me here. And uh, we will be uh, chairing this session. And we have four wonderful guest speakers today. And they will talk to us about uh, topics on uh, gastronomy from ancient times to modern Mediterranean well-being philosophy, healthy eating and Greek food, vegetarian and vegan Greek diet. So um, perhaps I should first introduce our first guest speaker, you know, Maria, uh, Maria Ataposopolo. Um, so let me give a short introduction of Maria. Uh, she's the founder of the tourism marketing company, Respond on Demand. She's also the founder of the nonprofit urban company, Top Tourism. She serves as a chairwoman and a certified ambassador of the WFTA in Greece. And she's also a master culinary travel professional. So she serves as the ambassador of the World Gourmet uh, Society in Greece and Cyprus. And she also serves as ambassador of Green Destinations. She has given seminars for tourism professionals, as well as many speeches and presentations on tourism issues in events uh, in Greece and abroad. So um, Maria is a sustainable tourism marketing expert. She's also an expert uh, in culinary uh, travel. So uh, Maria is going to talk to us about gastronomy in Greece. So over to you, Maria. Thank you, Catherine. I know my last name is difficult, so it's better to remember me as Maria from Greece. Uh, let's share my screen. Let tell me if we are okay. Maria. It is okay, Maria. Okay, try to do this in full screen. I think we are okay now. Yes. First of all, I want to thank the organizers and uh, Dimitrios Buchalis, especially the professor Dimitrios Buchalis. You know, it's difficult to gather all of us in one day in one panel, but uh, he has a success on this. And let's make clear that I'm not here as a food and beverage expert, because I'm not. I am a gastronomy tourism expert, so this is my point of view uh, on the discussion we have today. Well, uh, you said my biography, so I think I have to start with the presentation. The title is Authenticity of Greek Gastronomy Can Make uh, gastro Greek Gastronomy Tourism Stand Out. And let's start with the definition of the authentic gastronomy. Uh, authentic cuisine, cuisine that reflects the traditions of a particular culture and is made with intention, care and knowledge. Authentic gastronomy for gastro tourists means the absolute traditional gastronomy. Authentic gastronomy is made or constructed in the traditional or original way or in a way that faithfully resembles an original recipe. Authenticity and quality. Authenticity in gastronomy tourism has its own quality, the quality of truth. Anything that is authentic is considered at the same time as quality food for the gastro tourist, since it is this authenticity that they seek in their travels. Those who have been involved in gastronomy tourism even a little know that the issue of authenticity in the creation of gastronomy experiences is extremely important. Gastronomy tourism relies on authenticity and we cannot talk about gastronomy experiences if the recipes are not authentic. Let's see in detail how the authentic is defined in the relation to gastronomy tourism. There are three factors that forms the authenticity in gastronomy tourism. 
First, authentic local products. Second, authentic recipes. Third, authentic way of cooking. Let's look at each of the above separately. Authentic local products. In gastronomy tourism, local products play a particularly important role. There are the ones that mainly give color to the experiences that gastro tourists are looking for. The soil, the climate and the way of production directly affect the taste of the products of a country or a region. It is this special taste of certain local products that gives them the uniqueness that gastronomy tourism uses to build authentic gastronomy experiences in each location. For example, if someone plants oregano and tomatoes in an Asian country and creates from these products a Greek salad based on a Greek recipe, are we talking about authentic Greek taste? Most argue that the soil and the environmental conditions prevailing in each country, Greece in our example, give a unique taste to its products. Therefore, anything planted in another area will not, will not have the exact same taste. It may have a similar taste, but not the authentic Greek taste that the gastro tourist is looking for. Authentic recipe. The recipe for each food we try is also very important. The recipe must be use the local products in the right proportions and in the right way to create the specific dish. For example, spinach pie, a well-known traditional Greek recipe, requires the use of Greek feta cheese. If another white cheese is used, but not feta, will we still be talking about the Greek traditional spinach pie? I think no. Authentic way of cooking. The way of cooking, for example, baking or frying, is also extremely important to properly acquire the specific taste of a dish. For example, when a recipe calls for frying, how authentic would the result be if instead of frying, the same ingredients are boiled in a pot? We can talk for hours about the authenticity of Greek cuisine, let us approach it briefly, discussing three basic ingredients that come to Greeks from the depths of the centuries. Bread has been one of the main ingredients in the daily diet of Greeks for centuries. Hippocrates speaks of various kinds of bread made from wheat flavor, sifted or not, with or without the use of yeast, with bran, with oatmeal, with honey and cheese, with oil and with sesame. The writer Athenaeus mentioned at least 72 different varieties of bread, while the comedian Aristophanes and philosopher Platonas praised the extraordinary talent of the most famous baker of the time named Thearion. In ancient Greece, the way of cultivating wheat and barley was known since the Homeric era. Bread was made at home, it was a basic household core for the women of the time, a time consuming and laborious process, which lead though to masterful production. The presence of bread on the Greek table is timeless. Over the centuries, the Greek skill of traditional bread kneading keeps its place, its special place in Greek cuisine until today. Oil and olive. The principles of olive cultivation are usually placed in the third millennium BC. Crete may have presented both Crete and Maine and Greece from the 14th and 13th century before Christ. They gave us testimonies about the olive and the oil. Also, small quantities of olives were found in vessels. Typical is the case of the Palace of Zagros in Easter Crete, where olives found in a water tank still saved their flesh thanks to the favorable preservation conditions. Why? The presence of vineyards and wine is lost in the depths of the centuries. We also have reports from Homer on this subject, which prove to us that the ancient Greeks not only knew the cultivation of the vine and the production of wine, but were also lovers of its taste.
Experts tell us that the Greeks began to produce wine between uh, the 13th uh, and 17th century before Christ. Thus, we understand we are talking about truly ancient history. The involvement of the Greeks with the production of wine from antiquity until today, a fact that proves thousands of years of experience in this field, has led to the production of high quality wines that are very popular abroad until today. The Greeks were the first to discover that the taste of wine improves if it is stored properly for some time. So they were the first to notice the results of proper aging of the wine. For this purpose, they stored the wine in clay jars, which they placed in the soil for long periods of time in order to age. Place of production. The concept of the designation of origin of wine arises for the first time in ancient Greece. We notice that even the place of production is written in text of the time. So we know until today about lesbian wine, wine from Chios Island, wine from Samos Island, etc. Authentic Greek recipes. We we could mention here many Greek recipes that maintain an authenticity and a continuity in time for many centuries. The white cheese of the Greeks, the feta cheese, the sweets with honey such as pastelli, the pies that come to us from antiquity and uh, were sweet or savory. In every village or city of Greece, in all lengths and breadths of the country, the visitor can taste such authentic recipes that stand the test of time. But is it, is it only this what makes the gastronomy experiences in Greece unique? No. Another determining factor that already makes Greece stand out in the field of gastronomy interest is the way in which family and friends are gathered around the table. Greeks communicate through food. The time that friends and relatives are eating together is a sacred time. When Greeks eat, they create their own small authentic communities. And it is this special way of how the Greeks used to eat that surprised the visitor and makes him want to be part of this special communication. Greeks have a strong sense of hospitality. From antiquity, they respected and welcomed the foreigners. The very leader of the ancient Greek gods of mythology, Zeus, Zeus or Jupiter, protected <laughs> all the foreigners. The hospitality of the Greeks is famous all over the world until this very date. In my opinion, the combination of this warm and authentic hospitality with the authentic gastronomy is what creates for the visitor the unique gastronomy experiences he is looking for. So, it is this unique combination of authentic gastronomy experiences that one finds in Greece combined with the authentic Greek hospitality, what makes Greek gastronomy tourism stand out. And these are exactly the elements that if cultivated and communicated in the right way, sets Greece as a pioneer in gastronomy tourism. And the final advice, if you want to feel the authentic taste of Greece, be sure to try a Greek recipe in Greece next to a beautiful deep blue beach or under the shade of a tree in one of the beautiful Greek forests. On an island, in a city, by the sea, at the mountains, the Greek gastronomy will satisfy you completely. Because, as we Greeks say, everything in Greece tastes better. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maria. And uh, um, Professor Bohales, should we uh, leave the Q&A later with the, uh, Professor Kavishi or we go to the next speaker? I think we should save uh, the Q&A to the last. So we have uh, a, a okay. all-round discussion. Right. Sure, thank you. So I'll say we'll save the Q&A to the last and uh, Professor Kavishi later will chair this session. So I would like to introduce our two, sec uh, sp two speakers. We, I can see two beautiful ladies in the window, Sylvia and Anna. Um, they are going to speak to us uh, on the Greek gastronomic map and uh, 
Yeah. Uh, so let me uh, introduce briefly introduce Sylvia. So uh, Sil Sylvia uh, Luana um, uh, Komedeki. She, she's the CEO at Chef Stories. Uh, she's an experienced mm -hmm. manager mm -hmm. with a demonstrated mm -hmm. history mm -hmm. of the production mm -hmm. industry and events organization. Mm -hmm. She has a great background in marketing and advertising, strong gastronomy events organizing professional, skilled in marketing management, events planning and budgeting, uh, project organizing and brand consulting. Uh, so welcome, welcome Sylvia. And then we have uh, next to Sylvia, we have Nana, Nana Sagoyura. Uh, she is a marketing <laughs> consultant subject specializing in gastronomy. After years in marketing and advertising, she focused on development and promotion of local agricultural food products. So while developing education and vocational training of adults. So, uh, so over to you both, our guest speakers. Hello, nice to be here with you. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you for organizing everything, uh, Dimitris. And I've got uh, to say, I love the I love the hairstyle. I've got to say it. <laughs> yes, because usually you see us uh, at, at night with pajamas. I love the hairstyle. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, we start with uh, our presentation, and I is, uh, uh, is responsible for the first part. So, shall we share the screen? Yes, please. Everything okay? Yes, it is okay. We can see the screen. Okay, so hello, I am Nana. Good morning from Thessaloniki, Greece. Um, I'm very happy to be here with you. Our presentation um, has the title Greek Gastronomy Uniqueness. In this presentation, we are, we are going to see a few factors that define Greek gastronomy as unique. Okay, so uh, one very important uh, factor is location and climate. Greece is a small country, is located between the 30th and the 5th uh, northern parallel of, of the earth. With uh, a warm uh, Mediterranean climate, is the ideal environment for a wide, a wide variety of cultivations, some of which characterize the Greek gastronomy and diet over time. Uh, you can see um, olives and olive trees. It's um, a very uh, characterizing product. Here you can see citrus is another category of uh, plants uh, well cultivated and well grown in Greece. You see an orange grove from Preveza Epiros. And of course, uh, vines and grapes. Uh, uh, Maria also talked about the importance of uh, wine in the Greek astronomy. Here you see a basket type um, training uh, vine in the island of Sadorini. And a different, a different um, um, approach, a line uh, tra trailed um, vinegar in uh, the area of Meteor, Meteora Thessaly. Location, so location and climate is one of the factors. Here you see um, apiculture in Halkidiki, uh, in Halkidiki area. Also, honey is very impo uh, an important production for uh, Greece. A second uh, factor is land morphology. Greece is a very small country, just 132, um, about 32 square kilometers. 20% uh, of the country is a continental area, and about 80% uh, and about 20% of the uh, country is um, an islandic area. The, we ha in Greece, there is uh, uh, there are about fifteen uh, kilometers, fifteen thousand kilometers of coastline, and about six islands. Also, um, twenty uh, seventy percent of the country is a mountainous and semi mountainous area. All these all these factors have to do that uh, Greece is characterized 
by a variety of microclimates and terroir. And this emphasizes what Maria said before, that in different areas we find different um, uh, different uh, different um, cosmic classes um, expressions expressions of the same product different honeys different wines different um, cheeses so another factor is flora and fauna um, that means a, a large a, 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 a great biodiversity in Greece are uh, recorded more than uh, six thousand species and and sub and subspecies of kyra plants, uh, and about one, one, uh, 900 of them are endemic, unique. You can find them only in the Greek land. Five to 600 are characterized as aromatic and uh, med medicinal herbs, and of course a lot of them are edible and used in uh, Greek uh, dishes and meals. And Greek flora is among the richest of European and Mediterranean or Mediterranean climate type areas. The same story about um, fauna, about 480 species of sea fish, from which uh, from uh, uh, the 600 recorded in the whole Medi Mediterranean area are live or visit Greek land. More than 100 mammals, almost half of the, of the species found in Europe, live or visit our country and our seas. And of course, there are um, an important number of indigenous breeds of domestic animals, cattle, sheep, goats, and pigs. Another factor is histor history and tradition. During the long history, Greeks have been foragers, hunters, farmers, animal breeders, sailors, merchants, and fishermen. Here you see a, a picture of uh, wild truffle hunting in the area of Thrace. Also, we have uh, archaeological, archaeological evidence about um, the farming and um, animal breeding in Greece. You can see an uh, olive harvesting uh, scene uh, as uh, it was painted on an uh, ancient um, uh, amphora, or a sheep herder uh, in uh, central, uh, a modern sheep herder in central Greece. Also, uh, sailors uh, sailing and um, trading was very important during the whole history of uh, Greece. Here you see um, an orca type ship. It was the most um, common ship that uh, was sailing in the area of Mediterranean during the ancient times. And of course, uh, fishing was another very uh, important activity as we, live, we are surrounded by sea and we have a very huge coastline compared, compared to the um, area of the whole area of Greece. And, uh, and during all this time, Greeks had plenty of time to learn how to utilize any local or imported natural edible material and integrate it in the, into the local cuisine. Also during this period, a Greek had the chance to visit places and meet different people and traditions. So they were influenced and uh, influence um, others um, in the whole uh, known world of uh, their era. Wealth and, uh, wealth and poverty is another factor that um, defines or um, participates uh, in the gastronomy mix, let's say. During this long history, there have been long periods of prosperity and decline, which respectively, respectively shaped access to food and eating, eating habits. So did social inequalities. I have an example here. During the Second um, World War, all the urban populations of Athens and uh, Thessaloniki learned how to cook uh, um, wild um, greens with rice, because it, it was the, un, the only materials available during the lack of food um, the country had dur during the war. Um, here is the perception uh, of uh, a German uh, painter about the um, uh, ancient Greek symposium. Another factor is religion. According to the Greek Orthodox religion, almost half of the year is a fasting period. 
that means that there is abstinence of uh, from meat and dairy products and some days even from olive oil so a uh, greek orthodox religion um, diet can be considered as a vegetarian and or vegan diet long before the modern world trend here you can see a very famous uh, monk monk epiphanius he died recently who for years were the, was the representative of mount athos and uh, he initiated Greece, but also the whole world in Mount Athos cuisine. We have a special uh, monastic cuisine. We are going to talk about this later. And uh, the idea of Mediterranean diet, this is uh, the paradox is that uh, Mediterranean diet as a concept came from uh, the United States and started from the United States when um, Ansel and Margaret Keyes, uh, during the decade of the uh, 50s, started uh, many surveys and, and, started, and studies among populations of Greece, um, especially in Crete, but also Italy and Spain. Um, a lot of publications and surveys started that period. The question, uh, the, uh, they were trying to find how diet is connected with health to re- uh, discover the connection because Hippocrates knew and Galinos, the ancient doctors knew that already. The, the Eastern world uh, started uh, asking such kind of, of questions um, and uh, the surveys about Mediterranean uh, diet are uh, still ongoing. Uh, and uh, I have to mention about Mediterranean diet that since uh, uh, 2010, Mediterranean diet is listed in the intangible cultural heritage of, of humanity, according to UNESCO list. And that includes the diets of uh, Greece, Italy, Spain, and uh, Morocco. And in uh, 2013, also the diet of Portugal, Cyprus, and created Croatia were aided in uh, this concept of Mediterranean diet. And let's see a few things about this famous Mediterranean diet, this triangle of Mediterranean diet. You can see the um, daily servings are whole grains, bread, uh, beans, legumes, nuts, and seeds. Um, daily servings, daily consumption of such materials. Daily consumption of fruits and vegetables. Daily consumption of olive oil. Few servings per week, fish and seafood. Um, weekly uh, and in moderated portions, diary, eggs, cheese, poultry and yogurt, and also uh, in special occasions, all uh, in very small amounts, all kinds of meats, red and white meat, and sweets. Mediterranean diet is also a concept that includes the daily physical activity as necessary to have um, health, and also eating with family. And when we say family, we're saying eating with, uh, together with others, not eating alone, just to eat. Fantastic. And then uh, uh, we are running a bit uh, behind the schedule. Uh, how many slides do you have? Uh, uh, just a few, just a few. Okay, okay. Thank so, you. So, Sylvia is going to conclude okay. this presentation. I'll try to go through them as quickly as possible. Um, the main thing about the gastronomy in Greece is uh, that uh, we have uh, some uh, aspects that are uh, in everywhere, in all, re in all regions. We eat fresh local seasonal ingredients, uh, we prefer simplicity, um, and we prefer to eat a lot uh, with people and to try different meze, not a big portion, uh, not the big uh, portion of one dish, or just the first and second course on our own. And we usually pair it with wine, uzo, tzipur, and regina, which are our spirits, uh, always well cooked. Um, we give a lot of time in cooking and eating, actually. Uh, the different thing we can find, the different differences we can find in Greece is that it's different when we cook and how um, we maintain our food in the mountains, in the sea, in urban cities and monastic cuisine. And of course, we have been uh, influenced by all the um, uh, international trends. And we have different cuisines in different areas. Uh, we have PDO, PGI, uh, maybe 
you have already met these and uh, we'll go through them in the other um, speech we have later. So I'll go over to the next one. Uh, the, in modern Greece, we have some coexisting trends. The familiar, the thing we know from our mothers and from our families. Uh, the um, massive with extensive penetration, the tradition that is coming back, but also we have um, uh, we have included the trends uh, that go in gastronomy today, that we try new things, exotic uh, tastes, uh, the free from or low products, low, low uh, sugar, fat, uh, the ones that are that go in the vegetarian, vegan diets and different kinds of diets, the macrobiotic or the cuisine of opera. Uh, but at the same time, we have some new uh, functional foods and um, like this one, which is a dried cheese, dried feta that you can get with you on the go or at office. And we have a lot of new um, uh, producers coming up with great packaging and new innovative products. We also uh, consume fair trade and clean label products all over the world. And uh, the thing we have to emphasize is that uh, the daily festive meals at home with the family uh, coexist with the meals out of home and the street of food, because food is very important to us, as we said. And another thing that we've said it before, but we have to emphasize it, is that we like to eat with others and eat, eat and, uh, different things at the same table, like this uh, picture. So Greek astronomy is a culture and a ritual. It's more than its ingredients. It's a sharing with others, having fun and enjoying life. Mm -hmm. And finally, the breaking news, maybe uh, you've known, or uh, maybe Ms. Zaharaki said, that we've been uh, the first city, the very first Greek city, Thessaloniki, which is our hometown, uh, that is included in the network of creative cities of gastronomy of West, UNESCO, and we're very proud of it. So thank you. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Sylvia and Nana. Uh, so I'll hand over to Professor Kathy Shi to introduce our uh, guest, guest speakers, uh, Ms. Michelle Lau. Professor Shi, please, over to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, let me introduce the final speaker for this session. Uh, Michelle, Michelle Lau will explain how the Greek astronomy is suitable for Asian or Chinese palate, and she will also talk about the good nutritious quality of Greek food. Uh, Ms. Lau is the principal nutritionist with an MSc degree and founder of Nutrilicious, which is a Hong Kong-based B2B business that offers diversified services, including food and health business consulting, culinary guidelines, um, nutrition, cooking classes, demos, and so forth. And like I mentioned earlier, she graduated uh, with an MSc uh, in nutrition from the uh, McGill University and also the University of British Columbia in Canada. So uh, please, Michelle, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Let me share my screen. Hello, everyone. Can everyone hear me fine? Yes. I hope so. So great. Uh, thank you. It's my honor to be here. I'm Michelle from Hong Kong. And thank you, Professor Dimitrios, for organizing this great event. And it's also my pleasure to be able to share my passion <laughs> and knowledge in nutrition and, of course, also eating. I love food. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is me. So I'm the founder and principal at, at Nutrilicious. We are a nutrition consultancy and communication company that aspire to inspire people to eat their way to healthier and happier lives. So I want you to all picture this. So a salad drizzle with olive oil, a squeeze of lemon, followed by a filet of freshly caught fish, perfectly grilled. And with a side of herb seasoned vegetables bursting with flavors, all enjoyed with a glass of red wine, or maybe not paired with a wine. <laughs> so this is the typical meal spread that you followed or you see at a Greek uh, cuisine or a Mediterranean style of eating. And besides of tasting really good, it's also often considered as one of the healthiest diets in the world. And also one that is very easy to follow. 
So let me tell you why. So let's have a look. Uh, I, I know the speakers earlier have covered the, the pyramids uh, uh, briefly, but I would also like to go into the details a little bit more. So um, although some, there are some, of course, indulgence on the table, like you know, oil, cheese, wine. The diet defining feature is that it's full of um, fresh fruits and vegetables, and it's also very much plant-based. And this heavy emphasis on fresh produce, of course, makes this diet very rich in vitamins, minerals, and also antioxidants. So antioxidants are compounds that can naturally fight cellular damage that can cause harms on our bodies, such as uh, cancer or even uh, detrimental to our heart health. And as you can see, the rest of the menu is made up of legumes, nuts, whole grains, seafoods, lean poultry, eggs, and also extra virgin olive oils, and yes, also some wine, as, as a lot of us might enjoy. And this diet is very light on dairy, while red meat is also very limited, but not off limits. And simple preparation using you know, herbs, Sea salts, garlics, peppers, lemon, juice lemons are also key. And they also highlight, this Greek diet also highlights foods that are um, that, uh, composed of natural uh, flavors rather than burying the dishes in calorie laden processed sauces and dressings and toppings, unlike other cuisines such as the SAT diet, which we call the standard American diet. So building most of your meals around plants and healthy fats offer a lot of health benefits, of course. And because of this, it also this type of diet also minimizes you know, processed foods and red meats. And by doing so, it limits your intake of saturated and also trans fats, which are not only bad for uh, our belly, our waistlines, but also bad for our hearts. And by also limiting added sugars, which according to a lot of research, um, which is also associated with a um, number of issues from, from heart disease to poor mental health. So, um, the Greek diet really is, is you know, not just great for our, our brain, but also our heart and also our um, overall body inflammation. Because inflammation, body inflammation is, is, is a root cause to a lot of disease, a lot of chronic disease. And by a, a, adopting a, a Greek diet or Mediterranean style of eating, it offers a host of benefits to our health. And as you can see, um, this type of diet or, or way of eating is, is, is more than just eating fresh and wholesome foods. It also encourages um, daily activities, physical activities, and also sharing meals with your loved ones. So on the to topic, on the subject of heart health, as you can see, vegetables, of course, is, is abundance on the Greek plate and olives which are also olives, olive oils are all the staples in, in, in the Greek cuisines. And tomatoes, which is a, a key ingredient in Greek cuisine, is, is of course high in vitamin C, vitamin A, and also lycopene, which is an um, antioxidant uh, that protects the heart and also uh, is preventive of, of prostate cancer. <laughs> And also is, this diet is also rich in whole grains, which is good for our digestive health, which now we all know a, a healthy gut is also um, great for our immune health. So this diet is truly amazing. <laughs> and fish, uh, seafood is also the centerpiece in, in the Greek cuisine. So uh, we should all be eating <laughs> like the Greek. So there are actually a lot of similarities between the, the Cantonese, uh, the Chinese food, the Chinese cuisine, and also the Greek cuisines. As you can see uh, in Chinese culture, uh, the Chinese food cultures, 
Of course, we, we do eat a lot of rice, but we also eat a lot of seafoods and also lean poultries and also different types of vegetables, such as um, root vegetables like taro, um, sweet potatoes, and also a variety of, of fruits. And this is uh, an aquarium. This is not an aquarium. This is uh, actually a, a fish or a seafood display tanks that, that you would see uh, in a lot of seafood restaurants or, or restaurants, Chinese restaurants that are situated by the sea in Hong Kong. So we, uh, Hong Kong is uh, situated um, by the coast. So we get an abundance of, of seafood. So we have no shortage of, of seafood from lobster to, to um, razor crabs, to clams, to crabs. So um, this is also a, a one of the main um, share traits of our diets and um, in Hong Kong or, or in Chinese cities um, the major cooking methods of seafoods are steaming, um, braising, um, sometimes stir frying and of course uh, deep frying at times and roasting and as you can see in this photo uh, there are many different types of seafoods and uh, the fish on the right is, is simply steam and with, with some um, herbs and spices topped uh, on the fish. And of course, uh, soy sauce is in, invented by Chinese or possibly <laughs> um, the Japanese people. I'm not too sure about this. I will check again later. And um, often also steam um, with a bit of soy sauce to, to enhance the, the umami flavor. And also, as you can also see in the top left, there is a, a bowl of noodles. Um, it shows that we, we really do love our, our, our seafood or our fish because um, some of the fish, um, fish meat or, or are turned into fish paste and, and then turn into fish balls, uh, like you can see in the photo. And we also like to use spices to enhance the flavors in our food. Authentic Chinese cuisine are, are also very healthy and um, flavorful. So some of the common um, spices used are star anise, fennel, cloves, um, Sichuan peppers, and Chinese cinnamon. And we also love, we also love um, sharing foods. So dim sum is, is the um, highlight of the uh, Cantonese cuisine. And a lot of the dim sums are actually steamed and they can be um, healthy given the, you, if you make the right choice or right orders. We need to wrap up, Ms. Mao. Yes, and we also love, love sharing food like, like the Greek. So um, we enjoy family gatherings and, and, and also celebrate foods at special times. And given the, the recent surges of cases in, in Hong Kong and also um, in China cities, um, we have to practice of course social distancing, but this does not stop us from, from eating with our families. So we now do so by, by um, Zooming as we're eating. <laughs> so I hope uh, we can all enjoy meals together in spite of um, difficult times. And I would like to wrap up by, by um, sharing um, to some words with, with the audience here. So there's just no perfect diet, and but the perfect diet has, has one hard rule, which is eat real fruit, not food-like substance. So um, the Greek diet definitely fulfills this. And how do we end the current chronic disease epidemic and healthcare, environmental and financial crisis? we have to cook our way out because cooking is, is fun. And if you're cooking with your family, if you love ones, it, it is, a, is a great form of um, relationship bonding and is also very therapeutic. So I hope you all enjoy my, my sharing and happy cooking. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we're, there's so much to share, so much to talk about, and all the four speakers did a wonderful job of sharing with us the food, the culture, the pictures. I'm sure everybody's hungry now. 
But unfortunately, we're out of time. We were prepared to uh, do a q and A. I'm sure there are lots of questions pouring in, but uh, unfortunately, we're out of time. So uh, I would like to thank all the speakers, Maria, uh, Sylvia, Zana, and Michelle for wonderful presentations. I'm sure we will schedule another time for us to share not only the knowledge, but also the food and wine. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kathy. Uh, ladies power. Uh, we had uh, six uh, <laughs> ladies uh, here and sharing. And, uh, and actually, um, I, I just want to show how similar in a way the Greek cuisine is to the Chinese. And I, I noticed that Sylvia was taking pictures when we had dim sum <laughs> from Michelle because it was kind of the mezze that we have in Greece. And, and I think that's the opportunity that the Greeks come to Hong Kong and and the Hong Kong people and the Chinese people go to Greece and hopefully we'll be able to, to move forward with those things. Thank you very much. Um, uh, uh, we need to move to the next uh, session. Uh, I appreciate uh, your contribution. Uh, and Totse, uh, as we say in Hong Kong. Thank you very much.